In this video, we're going to be talking about how to manage your domain portfolio, especially when it comes to making bulk updates on the domains themselves. I'm joined by my colleague, Kathleen, who is a branding expert with our team. Before we jump in, Kathleen, let me ask you this. What's one tool that you use all the time that makes your life easier? So one tool I would definitely say would be Google Calendar, just because, you know, we have like a hundred things, you know, I feel like going on all the time every day. Mm -hmm. So it really keeps me organized and focused and, you know, post notes only get me so far. So it definitely keeps me on track of things. That's perfect. And one of the tools we're going to talk a lot about is Google Sheets and how to use that. Um, so let's get started. I'm over here in the white label marketplace or the seller marketplace, and I'm on the domain tabs tab. If you've been with us through, through another, some of the other videos, you've seen that you can upload domains for the first time using CSV or a bulk upload method. It's simple and straightforward. Um, but there's one other method that we really wanna dig into in this video, and that's our Google Sheets integration. So let's jump in. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is when you come in for the first time, you're gonna set this up simply by, um, by adding an email address, the email address that you want to sync. We recommend that it's a Gmail address. There are some features with Gmail addresses that, um, that aren't available with other type of emails, but you can use whatever you have and is most convenient. So once you have that all set up, you're going to you can click export domains to Google Sheet. And then you can open the Google Sheet. And this is where we can do a lot of really fast, simple editing. The first thing you can do is you can add new domains. So you can start typing all your new domains into this sheet right here. And once you sync it back up, which we'll go through in a minute, those are gonna come into the account. So this is probably the best way to add new domains, especially once you're a little bit comfortable with the platform. Some of the other features, the first thing you're gonna see is whether you want it to sync or not. Especially when you have a large domain portfolio, say well over a thousand domains, you may only be editing five, 10, even 20. And if you don't use this feature and you sync everything, it's fine, you can do that, but it'll be faster if you tell us the exact, um, the exact records that you want us to update. Um, just put a, a Y in that field and it'll update specifically those. Again, you can go Y to all of them and, and it'll update everything and that's perfectly fine. It just takes a little bit longer, not a problem. Um, when updating, uploading new names, you'll want to have a sell price. That's the only other thing that's required besides for the domain itself. If you want to update your selling price, you can do that right there as well. We have the ability to add a discount. The, this should be a numeric value, the amount of dollars that you want discounted. Discounts update every Monday. Let's just look at a discount really quick. You'll see that if you put a discount, you can, um, you, you'll, you'll have the discount showing. And then it has an end date. The end date provides, um, you know, makes the buyer understand that there's, um, you know, there's an urgency. So we've seen that this is very, very helpful. The next feature that you have is make an offer. So what you can do is you can, um, there's two things that you can do here. If you leave the sell price blank and you use make an offer, what you're gonna end up with is a page, excuse me, that looks like this, where the buyer can come in and make, a, make an offer. If, however, you have a sell price and a make an offer, then it'll have both of those things. So what would make someone choose make an offer? Like why would someone choose that over a listing price? Absolutely. A lot of times you have just the make an offer function. If you, you um, have a higher value domain where you're fairly flexible, but you, you, and you don't want to lead with a price. Um, as we've seen, you know, higher value domains, Real English Words is a, is a great example. They have a big 
deviation. And a lot of times sellers are, are have, don't have a, a very specific number that they're in mind. They're, they can be flexible. So by just having to make an offer, you, you let the customer lead the negotiation process and you can start from there. It's a great negotiation tactic. If you have a higher price domain, oftentimes these are in the you know, three to 10,000 plus domain uh, range, you can add the price and the make an offer. The point of this is that you're subtly indicating that you're willing to negotiate. So some buyers we've seen, they, they can come to the page and they see, think the price is out, that, that the domain is out of their price point, so they leave. By having that make an offer, again, you, you have a subtle indication that you're willing to negotiate and those, then somebody might start that process. So you're, you're giving that, um, to say the same thing, an indication um, that to, to, to start that negotiation process. Um, what we don't recommend doing is doing that with lower price domains. If it's a lower price domain, you know, you probably don't want to spend a lot of time negotiating Then you just have the uh, standard for sale price and, and leave it at that. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. That's great. The next thing we have is installments. You can set anywhere if you don't want to take installment payments. Installment allows somebody to buy a domain and break up their payments. If you don't want to take them, that's just fine. And you can set that to zero um, and anywhere up to 24 months. A rule of thumb when it comes to this is that think about the monthly payment that you're going to make. So if you have a lower price domain, you probably don't want to set it to 24 installments because the monthly payment is not going to be that meaningful. But if you have a very high price domain, single English words, hundreds of thousands of dollars, then that longer window is going to make it easier for somebody to jump in and make that purchase. Yeah. One thing to note is that you have the ability to set preferences um, on your whole account as well. So you can set everything to one in, in one way, and then you can change on the individual domain in this section. Just to look at this, excuse me, just to look at this really quick, you can see the installments down here where, um, where you can, uh, the buyer can choose between different installments. This one's set to a max six months. A few other interesting features, the floor price. This is regarding negotiation. We have the 24 seven chat support. It's one of the most, um, the features that many, many people are talking about are really giving us great feedback on. Um, one of the things that happens is offers come in through that chat support. And if we're able to start the negotiation process right away, as opposed to waiting for you, maybe you're asleep, maybe you're not gonna be able to get there for you know, several hours, even a day or two, maybe you're on vacation, it's a weekend. If you give us information about your floor price, that allows us to start the negotiation. We're definitely not just going to jump to your floor price. You know, we're going to have a solid negotiation and try and get the best value for you. But if we have that detail, we can start that process on your behalf. And we've seen that really help to increase, uh, to get domain sold. Yeah. Domain descriptions is another one. Kathleen, do you want to take that? Yeah. So one of the earlier points we mentioned in the previous video was that domain buyers are more likely to, you know, go forward with a name if it has a nice story complex behind it or concept or just anything meaningful other than just a simple name. So the more context that you put behind a name, the more likely, you know, a buyer will move forward with that name. Absolutely. Yeah. And I always often talk about the words on the page versus the whole story, the whole brand. When you see two words mashed up, when you see two words blended, one word, you know, it's not as exciting as when you start to get the visual and see maybe these words come together to tell more story or, you know, there's a metaphor that's, that's really deep. And when you can start bringing that out with the description, you're definitely going to help yourself sell the names. Exactly. There's some other features, and it's important to note that these are not required, but there's some other great things that help us um, put the right domains in front of the right people, and, and it helps our AI, as you probably know that a lot of um, our, our discoverability and our, our search functions are built on AI. So things like root words, the example I always give is Groupon. If you put Groupon into our system, it's already sold, so you can't, but if you did, mm -hmm. um, our system would never know that it was built on coupon because it, it's a blend. 
Um, so by putting that as one of the root words, you're helping yourself get fogged. Um, primary category is the category that the domain is most suited for. You're going to see a list of categories um, in, in the tab right in the spreadsheet. So you can search through that copy and paste and find the most relevant one. And the final thing you'll have is, is the domain is active or not. Predominantly, you're going to have active domains in the account. This means they're showing, they're live. Um, but you do have the ability to set that as no, so it could still be in the system functionally, but it's not displaying, it's non-active. And as you're going through you know, the life of your portfolio, you're going to have different reasons to turn that off. One other important thing to notice is that there's a whole tab that reviews um, these different features, what they are, how to use them, and some of the technical things. So you can definitely review all of this right here. Uh, one of the other great things about this process and using Google Sheet is you can share this. So you can share this sheet with other people if you co-manage a uh, portfolio and they can make updates with you um, and then you can sync it back after you've worked on them together. Oh, that's great, yeah. So to end this all up, once you're done with uploading new domains or making your bulk adjustments, you simply click import changes to Google Sheet and everything comes back in. It can take a little bit of time, especially if you have a large portfolio and you're dealing with a lot of name. Be, be patient, it's not gonna happen in, in just a few seconds. Um, yeah, so that's how that works. One final tip, when you are exporting something for a second time, um, you know, as you use this multiple times, we recommend you start by exporting domains to Google Sheets. So this will make sure that when you get the spreadsheet, you know, for the second, third, hundredth time that you've used it, it's going to be the most relevant data. So just click on this export domains before you click on open Google Sheets. That is our tool. And hopefully it's going to help you make a lot of great um, progress on your portfolio in a really easy and straightforward way. As always, remember that you can access our 24-7 chat support team via the blue button, the bottom right corner of squadhelp.com. They're there to support you if you have any questions.